Let me ask you a question. Can you trust Matt Canada as the offensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers? I'm going to let you know my answer here in just a second. And I also have four things that Kenny Pickett needs to improve in year two if he's going to solidify himself as the franchise quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Welcome into Steelers Talk. And today we are going to be previewing the Steelers training camp here this season. Of course, training camp starts tomorrow. Everyone reports tomorrow. It's going to be fantastic. Going to be having great coverage for you guys throughout the entirety of training camp leading up to week one when the Steelers play the 49ers. So make sure you click that subscribe button for me right now if you want to become an expert on the 2023 Pittsburgh Steelers. If you want to know everything there is to know about the black and gold leading up to week one, you're going to want to click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you never miss any of our free content. All right, now let's get into my uh, list of 10 things that I think that you need to be watching for during training camp this year. Number one on my list is the question of, has Matt Canada improved the offense? Because it needs to get better, plain and simply. Take a look at the numbers from last year. This just isn't cutting it, guys, plain and simply. 26th in the league in points, 27th in the league in yards per play. Third down, per, third down percentage, number seven, which is, I guess that's pretty nice, but red zone needs to get better. These numbers need to get better if the Steelers are going to compete with some of the high-flying offenses that are currently in the AFC. And if they want to compete for a Super Bowl, the defense is not just going to be enough. Now, it did get a little bit better towards the end of last season, right? It goes from like 26 to 19 in points, where you get to 16th in yards per play, and yards per game, I should say. And then third down, it gets up to number one. So Matt Canada's offense did get better uh, towards the end of 2023, but these numbers still need to get better. And a big part of that here is going to be whether or not he adapts his scheme, because that's one of the most vanilla schemes that you will see in the National Football League. In fact, you know, maybe other than like Joe Lombardi or Nathaniel Hackett from last season with the Denver, with the Broncos and Chargers respectively, the Steelers offense was the most bland offense in the league last year. And if Matt Canada wants to keep his job, he needs to adapt. He needs to adapt to some of these modern trends that we're seeing in the National Football League. Otherwise, this offense is going to once again underperform. And if that happens, the team is going to underperform. So Matt Canada's got a big responsibility uh, going into 2023 uh, with the Steelers keeping him on as offensive coordinator this year. It's going to be very interesting to see if he's worth his salt this season. So how are you guys feeling? Let me know down there in the comments section. Give me your confidence level and offensive coordinator Matt Canada right now. Put it on a scale of 1 to 10. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. Find that pinned comment when that happens and answer today's question. Number two on my list of things to watch during training camp is, uh, let's talk a little bit about Kenny Pickett here because I'm very interested to see how much he's going to be improved from his rookie season because I thought he was pretty decent, his rookie campaign. You take a look at some of these numbers here. The three things that I look for when I'm evaluating quarterbacks, I want to know how accurate a quarterback is to all levels of the field. Uh, just an accuracy rating is something that, uh, uh, that quantifies that. He was 14th in the league last season, so that's something you like to see. It's about league average. Then I want to know how good of a decision maker are you, right? So a decision making ranking is another Sabre metric out there. He was at 12.7 last year, which about league average as well. So that's good to see from a rookie. And then I want to know how much were you being pressured? So adjusted pressure rate is something uh, that quantifies that one. And he was the ninth most pressured quarterback in the National Football League, according to that metric. So I look at those three and I look at somebody that's a pretty decent NFL quarterback in his rookie season in this really bland Matt Canada offense. So that's really promising. Now, the thing that I think that he definitely needs to improve on there is the red zone efficiency. Last year, just 9.4% touchdown percentage in the red zone, which was good for last place in the league among uh, quarterbacks that had 50, at least 50 snaps in the red zone. So that's definitely something that needs to improve. And listen, you know, the Matt, Matt Canada scheme and all these different things, wide receiver play, that comes, into, uh, that comes into account when it comes to that number as well. But the next highest number is like 16.4. Okay, some of that 9.4 ranking, that last place ranking uh, and red zone efficiency 
could see, it, at least a little bit, is on Kenny Pickett. So he needs to get a lot better in the red zone, in those tight spaces, in my opinion. And then some of the other things that he needs to improve on, pocket presence. I think going back to college, he's been somebody that likes to leave clean pockets. And that's something that he just needs to get more comfortable with, being in the center of that pocket, moving his feet, and getting through his progressions without looking to use his legs as often. And then also, this is probably the biggest thing that I think he needs to improve on. He needs to anticipate space better versus zone coverage. Defenses began to pick that up last year that he just doesn't really anticipate open windows versus zone coverage very well. He was very effective at targeting uh, man coverage last season, but against zone, much, much less effective. He's going to have to get a lot better versus zone defenses if he wants to be a franchise quarterback in this league. And then finally, I want to see him be more aggressive and throw more passes down the field, specifically to George Pickens when he is one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, for most guys, throwing it up uh, a one-on-one -on -one ball like that deep down the field is like a 50-50 chance. With George Pickens, it's more like a 70-30 chance. I think you have to take, in the, uh, take advantage of that numbers game, and you got to be more aggressive this season. He had some nice throws deep down the field, and I think he's actually a pretty accurate passer. Take advantage of that and be aggressive off of play action this year. Now, I got some more things that you need to be watching out for during Steelers training camp here in just a second. But first, if you believe in Kenny Pickett, if you think that he is the franchise quarterback of this team moving forward, you think he's going to be fantastic, make the investment in his jersey. And the good thing for you guys is that you can grab Kenny Pickett's Steelers jersey from our friends at Fanatics for 25% off when you use code DAISY. Again, that's DAISY, D-A-I-S-Y. That's a limited time deal just for today, by the way. So go to chatsports.com slash Pickett. If you use our link, Fanatics will know that we sent you. I'm telling you guys, this, this deal is only available for like the next 10 hours. Get his, get his jersey 25% off right now by going to chatsports.com slash Pickett to get your Kenny Pickett jersey today. Now, another thing I'm keeping my eye on during Steelers training camp is where will Pat Pete be lining up on the defense? Now, of course, Patrick Peterson was one of the biggest free agency pickups for the Pittsburgh Steelers this year, and he's expected to be the new sheriff in town here, the new CB1 of this secondary, at least for the next couple of years, while Joey Porter Jr. and Corey Trice Jr. develop here in the secondary. Now, I think because of the guys that you have in that room right now, I think it's it makes sense to put Patrick Peterson as more of a nickel star player when you have uh, when you're in your nickel sets and you have your three best corners on the field. Levi Wallace is more of an outside corner. Joey Porter Jr. the same way. But it's looking like Patrick Peterson is going to be fluctuating from inside to outside, kind of mixing things up this year. And Mike Tomlin definitely has a special role for him, and he definitely had something in mind for him when they signed him so early in NFL free agency this year. I really am intrigued by this cornerback unit. That that the Steelers have this year, and Patrick Peterson's going to be a big part of that. Now, another guy that's really intriguing to me is first-round rookie Broderick Jones, and whether or not he's going to be the starter for week one for the black and gold, because Dan Moore Jr., you could definitely make the argument that he's the better player right now. Now, Broderick Jones, I think, is probably the better run blocker already. I think he's, a, he's an awesome run blocker already. And I think he's going to be able to go out there, and that's going to be his bag right away in the league. However, he does need to improve uh, his pass protection skill set, and Dan Moore Jr. definitely has him beat in that regard. He is a better pass protector, at least right now. And in order for Broderick to usurp Dan Moore Jr. as the starting left tackle, he's going to have to prove that uh, he's worth that position, because Dan is still a pretty decent starter. So in order for him to move up that depth chart, he's going to have to prove that he is ready to go, and until then, he's going to be sitting the bench. So let me know who you think is going to be the starting left tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers here, week one of the 2023 season. Will it be Dan Moore Jr.? Will he hold on? If you think that, type DM, or if you think the rookie Broderick Jones rises up the ranks here and is the starter for that first week uh, matchup against the 49ers, give me a BJ down there in the comments section. All right, number five on my list here of things to watch out for is that I want to see if they're going to be going to more heavier packages on offense this year. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean more tight ends on the field, less wide receivers, because 
Uh, Omar Khan really did a good job with this tight end room, in my opinion, adding Darnell Washington in the draft to go along with Pat Firemuth in that tight end depth chart that is so fantastic, in my opinion. Right now, Zach Gentry is great depth. I think Connor Hayward is another uh, nice little curveball to be throwing in there as well. Pat Firemuth is a top 10 tight end in the National Football League right now. Darnell Washington is going to be a pseudo like sixth lineman for you in the run game. I think if Matt Canada were smart, they'd be playing a lot of 12 personnel this year, maybe even some 13 personnel, especially in those short yardage situations. And, you know, do I trust Matt Canada to be that smart? I'm not too sure, but I guess we will have to see. Speaking of Connor Hayward here, uh, how are they going to use him? Like, how are they going to use Connor Hayward? Are they going to use him as a tight end? Are they going to use him as a fullback? What is their plan for him? Because I think he could be one heck of a fullback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Matt Canada doesn't like using fullbacks, right? It's just not really part of his offense. He likes to be an 11 personnel. I mean, last year, that's pretty much all the Steelers ran was 11 personnel, which means three wide receivers, one running back, one tight end. And, you know, I think that if he were smart, he would adjust his scheme a little bit to play to the strengths of this roster. I think Connor Hayward could be like a Kyle Juszczyk type of fullback there, a true receiving weapon, because he's a really good route runner as a tight end. Just imagine the kinds of routes that you could do and the concepts you could draw up with a guy like Connor Hayward, who is six foot, 230 pounds. He's a great blocker, so he could absolutely play fullback. I think this would be a no-brainer decision. But again, this is what Mrs. Matt Canada we're talking about here. So I guess we will never know here until we see it here in training camp. So help us out here by liking today's video. Really do appreciate all the support, guys. If you're enjoying the content here on the channel and you want to help us grow a little bit, tell the YouTube algorithm that you're enjoying this video and that all it takes is just that one click of the thumbs up icon and it really does help us out guys so we really do appreciate all the support all right now next on my list i'm intrigued i'm very interested in keanu neal and the role that he is going to be playing for Mike Tomlin in 2023 on the defensive side of the ball because i think some people are kind of playing this off is like oh it's just a depth signing and free agency i don't think that's the case whatsoever. Keanu Neal is the type of guy that's going to be coming into this situation. And he's not on the Buccaneers. He is on the Steelers now, but he's going to be coming in as kind of a hybrid linebacker slash safety that kind of was the Terrell Edmonds role right last year, right? Terrell Edmonds played in the box a ton. He played kind of like a hybrid linebacker, a dime linebacker type, you know, when uh, they went to their three safety package. I expect to see that three safety package a ton this year. And I think Keanu Neal is going to be playing kind of that hybrid linebacker role and he's going to be sharing quite a few snaps uh, with the Landon Roberts this year because I think when they go to those nickel sets when they go to those dime sets I think he Landon Roberts is going to be coming off the field because he's a liability in pass coverage but on those early downs Roberts will be in there as a really good run blocker he's definitely the best run blo run blocking linebacker that the Steelers have but he's a liability in pass coverage so I think in those passing situations Keanu Neal is somebody that can come down and play that hybrid linebacker role next to Cole Holcomb, and I think that'd be a super, super smart way to use Keanu Neal in this defense, and I think Mike Tomlin's pretty darn smart, so I think that's what's going to end up happening, but it's going to be interesting to see how much linebacker Neal plays here during training camp. Then another question that I have this year is, what are we getting from Mark Robinson, right? Who is Mark Robinson as an NFL player? Is he, is he a starter? Is he a good backup? Is he a scrub? What is he? We need to find out this this year. Uh, and it's definitely possible because you got Tanner Muse in the locker room right now. Because you got Nick Kwiatkowski, who's pretty darn good himself in the locker room. Mark's got to prove his worth this season. Now, last year, he was a rookie. All these growing pains, you know, they were forgiven, right? They were like, you're still young. You still have high potential. We're going to keep you around. But if he's still not performing, if he's not getting better, I think that there's a real shot that he could be a, like a surprise cut candidate this year. Now, I don't Hope that to happen. I think that Mark is a really athletic guy. He's a little bit undersized, but he's a thumper in the run game. He needs to get better in every phase of the game, and I'm going to be interested to see what kind of improvements he made during this offseason. And now talking about some rookie corners here, Joey Porter Jr. and Corey Trice Jr. Are they going to be ready to play? That's going to be something I'm watching during practices over the next couple of weeks and during the preseason games. I don't have any worries about Joey Porter Jr. I've been saying it all offseason since the Steelers drafted this kid that he is a perfect fit for Mike Tomlin's bump and run kind of system. 
system at the cornerback position. I think he's going to be the number one guy in this uh, secondary here for the next couple of years. You know, I think it might take him a year or two to really establish himself as that true alpha type. But once he does that, I think he's going to have a long stretch of, of seasons where he's just freaking fantastic. Perfect fit with the long arms and the physicality. This guy is Pittsburgh Steeler written all over him. And the thing is, too, Corey Trice has all those same characteristics. Now, I think that Trice probably won't play as much year one. He's not as high of a draft pick. Levi Wallace is going to be expecting to play. But I think that Trice, throughout the season, he's going to get more and more and more playing time. I think by the time next season rolls around 2024, I think we're going to be looking at Corey Trice Jr. as one of the mainstay corners on this defense because he's such a perfect Perfect fit. He's so athletic. He's really good in coverage as well. He, I had a third round grade on this guy, and I think that he's going to be able to be ready to go there for the start of the 2024 season, and he's definitely going to end up making the final roster. Then the final question that I have going into training camp this year is, what are we getting out of Calvin Austin III? Right? He, he missed all of last season with that foot injury that he that he suffered in training camp. And now that we're back to this point here where he's on the roster ready to play, is he going to be the dynamic weapon that the Steelers drafted him to be? Right, He's somebody that can provide some stuff on the special teams units as well. I think he's going to get a little bit less playing time than someone like Allen Robinson, who they brought in via trade. But I think you, you know when you're going to your four wide receiver sets, when you, when you need a true uh, dynamic slot wide receiver on your you know on third and long to somebody to just get open I think Calvin Austin third that's what's going to be his bag this year I think he's extremely fast I think he's a 4-2-4-3 kind of guy still pretty tiny so it's going to be interesting to see how he uh, kind of adjusts to NFL life especially coming off an injury but there's no doubt about it you get this guy in open space he is going to make things happen now, speaking of Steelers training camp, I will be attending Steelers training camp practice there at St. Vincent uh, in Latrobe this Saturday. So if you want to come meet me, you want to go talk ball with me, whatever, you guys can find me in Latrobe on Saturday for that Steelers practice. So get your tickets now. I know they're free, but they go fast. So I really do appreciate all the support, guys. Make sure you click that subscribe button again because we're going to be having daily Steelers content for you guys 100% free throughout the, throughout the preseason, throughout training training camp. If you want to know everything that there is to know about this team heading into week one, you're going to click that subscribe button for me right now. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. I will see you guys later. And as always, here we go Steelers.